2012, you're over in Washington, you're covering the election, and you got a phone call from your wife um, uh, talk, talking about uh, Maddie. What did she say to you? She just said that she uh, had noticed that Maddie wasn't eating very much, that she was pushing away food, she was um, pretending that she was eating but wasn't, mm. she was hiding food. Um, and she said, look, I'm just a bit worried about it, we need to keep an eye on it. Mm. And so that's what we did, and I came back a week or so later, or a couple of weeks later, and, uh, you know, she had got really bad, and the, the speed with which it happens mm. is, is extraordinary. Was she a promising athlete? Um, yeah, she, she, yeah, she was an athlete. Bubbly she girl. was Yep, yeah, and uh, completely normal. And then she just entered this spiral of... Um, you know, descended into this terrible world where she was just shrinking away. You've never been able to figure out, between all of you, why it happened? No, and I still, to be honest, Phil, I still don't know why. I mean, she said oh, it was something about control, the only thing she could control. She fell out of control, she didn't feel worthy. Uh, the only thing she could control was what she put into her mouth and, you know, and what she was eating. And, and I guess one day we might find out, but all I know is that it, we went through hell Mm. We couldn't find the help we really needed until well down the road, and we were lucky, you know. I was a sort of pushy journalist, my wife's an A&E doctor. We managed to work something out, but what I'm worried about and why I'm speaking out is what about all the people who can't do that and yeah. don't have the support and can't find the help? So you, you described that moment when she began to spiral as that she, she'd gone, that although she was yeah. there physically... She was there person, physically, she was but there. she was gone. She was a basically a hollowed out person and you know and you and to watch someone shrink away like that and to you know to get up at four in the morning and find she's not in a bed because she's walking five miles um come rain come snow I, you know, I see a footprint in the snow across the garden as she'd go back down the fields and round the fields mm. and you know it broke my heart yeah yeah but and it, it, as a dad um it, it, it's a very difficult thing to understand, to come to terms yeah. with. And I thought, you know, pull yourself together, get real, just eat, you know, and it was so wrong. It was the wrong thing to say. This is a mental illness. And, you know, it's a mental illness with this physical manifestation, which means that people die. I think something like 20 percent of anorexics either commit suicide or die from malnutrition. But you said, uh, and when I read this, I can't imagine the heartbreak you're all going through. You said, if you really want to starve yourself to death, just get on with it. And then you said, at least once, you might have meant it. Yes. Now, I put that in the article in the Sunday Times, and I kind of <laughs> regret it a bit now because the papers have just... That was the line. But that is what I felt. <laughs> that is what I said to her. And, in fact, she wrote a little piece in the Sunday Times as well, in which she said, that is what I remember. And, in many ways, that was something that kicked me into some sort of sanity yeah. mm. and as I say she then we you know we struggled with private health um, you know they they were looking to force feed her and you know th she threatened to commit suicide we pulled her out and then Catherine gave up work set up a kind of emergency ward in her bedroom and we looked after her and then this unit this day unit used to pick her up before breakfast by ambulance take her in intensive counseling they fed her, and slowly, surely, she got better. And now she's much recovered. She's better back at Union, you know, doing well. I mean, we talk about it frequently on the show, and you think you're getting, we're getting better and more progressive and more understanding, but then... It's it doesn't matter how understanding we get. It doesn't matter how much we, you know, acknowledge that there's a problem. What matters is money, and what matters are new units, you know, places that kids and um, teenagers can go, and if they're feeling suicidal can go and see someone, see trained counsellors. We need mm. to train hundreds more counsellors mm. in eating disorders and mental health. There needs to be places you can go straight away. What's the point in giving someone who feels suicidal an appointment in 13 weeks? Yeah, you know. of course. We watched, though, on, on the news last night um, that, uh, that A&E departments, hospitals, critical care levels, absolutely a breaking point. Yeah. Um, I, I watched a nurse who was in t said, you know, I can't talk anymore, I'm going to be in tears. So if we haven't got money for that, how are we going to fund this? Well, look, my wife is an A&E doctor. She comes back every night with stories of how they're struggling to cope. And, you know, in an A&E ward, I get all that. 
But if we've got politicians saying, you know, the, the idea is to have parity between physical health and mental health, well, that needs to be backed up by money. It's all about priorities. But I think what we're facing here is potentially an epidemic in mental health problems, particularly in young people, whether it's caused by too much social media, the misuse of social media, all this Facebook stuff, all the pressure that's on young girls, particularly to sort of live a certain lifestyle or look to, to look perfect. Um, I don't know what the cause is, but if we're facing that kind of epidemic, then we need to do something about it. And if we don't do something about it soon, and which is why I'm sort of trying to speak out a little bit, I think it'll be too late for a and, whole generation. And the fact that, that Maddie did get the care, I mean, eventually, as you said, you were lucky, and how brilliantly she's doing now. Yeah, she's doing great, and I wouldn't be doing this if she wasn't doing great. Yeah. You know, part of me thinks, has she fully recovered? She is so much better. She is to all intents and purposes, back to where she was. She's recovered. I'm, you know, it's, it, and sh for her to now to come out and say, I want to say something about this and I want to, you know, try and help other people is brilliant. And so I've sort of gone along with it. But it hasn't been easy to put us out there. No, but I think really I feel, no, but I I feel so strongly about yeah. the issue that I think we should do. And yeah. she's doing so well and I'm so proud of her.